the, thing, the, the task that I have been assigned is to talk about the first two chapters of Politics of Prudence. They, these are chapters that they changed my life. And we have um, uh, over 100 Centurion graduates uh, through our programs. Over 300 people went through our programs. And many of them will, will, make the same, will make the same testament about how Russell and his thought, I see Scott Sazak in the back, is not. It was, had you ever heard of Russell before, the no. Centurions? The first part of my talk is about ideology. Let me start off with the, uh, a, a quote from perhaps the most Kirkian, uh, the most Kirkian congressman serving in, uh, in Washington today, and that would be Congressman Thad McCotter. McCotter, who by the way just wrote a book that's being released with ISI uh, that you should check out. McCotter said in a recent interview within our uh, National Review uh, that philosophy, philosophy requires one to fit his or her mind to the world. Ideology, on the other hand, compels one to fit the world into his or her mind. Big difference here. A lot of folks live uh, with, with a detachment from reality. The ideologue is this type of person. McCotter goes on to say, Find, finding fallible human beings incapable of achieving an earthly utopia, ideologues resort to coercion and compulsion through the powers of the state to achieve their aims with often disastrous, barbarous results. It is why Edmund Burke called ideology an armed doctrine, and why John Adams, one of our founders, called ideology the science of idiocy, and why Russell Kirk, uh, parroting H. Stuart Hughes, said that conservatism is not an ideology. Conservatism is the negation of ideology the negation of ideology. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But to Dr. Kirk, the ideologue, the ideologue is one that thinks that politics is a revolutionary instrument for transforming society. In fact, transforming man. The ideologue thinks that man, man's human nature is not fixed, but rather is something that can be recreated for the times. So this is a very, very important distinction because Dr. Kirk was very, very concerned, frankly, about conservatism becoming an ideology, a rigid ideology that adhered only to particular dogma. Dr. Kirk proclaimed proudly and daringly that politics is the art of the possible. The art of the possible. Well, what does that mean? Well, first of all, it means that if, if an idea or policy is not prudent or if it is not possible, then the holders of that particular idea are more likely than not going to find themselves in an ever-shrinking minority of powerless people. The ideologue doesn't allow compromise because he has to adhere to this rigid, this rigid set of dog a dogma. <clears throat> kind of covered some of this. Kirk saw ideology as a political formula, a rigid set of dogma that promises mankind an earthly paradise, but in cool fact, what often happens is the ideologue creates nothing more than a set of terrestrial hells. The 20th century has been called the century of the ideologue, Nazism, fascism. I mean, we go on and on and on and on. It originally started with the, the, the French Revolution, the, the term ideology. But these are the folks that try to create uh, a utopian scheme to solve all of the world's problems. Kirk called ideology an inverted religion, indeed a sham religion, the opium of intellectuals, a corruptive power which makes political compromise impossible and prevents prudence, and is inescapably opposed to the truth. True, reli true religion, on the other hand, is a, di is a discipline for the soul, the ideologue on the other hand has this intellectual abstraction of a set of dogma ideas that it tries to enforce on a world. It's kind of like trying to stick a square peg into a round hole. All ideologues work mischief through their cold-blooded, brutal view of your life because ideology, I, ideology is founded merely upon ideas, upon abstractions, fancies unrelated to political and social reality, Why conservative views, on the other hand. This is why conservatism is not an ideology, but rather a negation of ideology 
Conservative views are founded upon custom, convention, continuity, the long human experience, uh, the long experience of the human species, what Patrick Henry called the lamp of experience. The ideologues will vie with one another ceaselessly, each in a fancy fidelity to their version of absolute truth, and are quick to strike down every rival, denounce every deviationist or defector from their particular orthodoxy. Thus, fierce factions are raised up amongst the ideologues themselves. I'm quoting Kirk here, I'm not this eloquent. The ideologues themselves, and they war mercilessly and endlessly upon one another as did the Trotskyites and the Stalinists. What Kirk believed we needed to do in part was political prudence, not political belligerence, and said that ideology is the disease, not the cure. Now I take this one step further and I say that, <clears throat> that a party, any political party, whether it be a Republican or Democrat or Independent, is nothing more than an imperfect vessel. Think of it as a ship <coughs> on which there are a crew of ideas, sometimes a motley crew. But in order for that ship to remain healthy, there needs to be kind of an ongoing mutiny between all the members on the crew. Dr. Kirk would suggest that the only ones that should be made to walk the plank are the rigid ideologues, the ones that can't get along with everybody else on the ship. There should be healthy debate, no doubt. However, Kirk said that the way to, well, he didn't say it this way, but if we really want to run the party ship aground, is to allow the ideologues to be its captain. So <clears throat> with that, uh, let me point out that not everybody agreed with Dr. Kirk's assessment of ideology. One of his very best friends, and one of my intellectual mentors and heroes, Robert Nisbet, actually came out and said, uh, writing against Russell, that no, 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 Russell takes it too far. That ideology is really just a body of ideas that can be uh, used in an ideological sense that Russell means it to, to force bad ideas upon an unwilling public. But <clears throat> where Nisbet and, 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 and Dr. Kirk disagreed essentially was, well, everything's kind of an ideology because man, inevitably, none of us are as smart as Russell Kirk. And so we, essentially, we try to determine our own dogma by which we live our lives. They end up becoming guideposts. They become ideas that we believe strongly in. 